Hi everyone, welcome to our next instalment which is going to be covering St Edward's Chair or the Coronation Chair one of the most momentous pieces really around the Coronation as it plays such a pivotal role the Coronation Chair, known historically as St Edward's Chair or King Edward's Chair is an ancient wooden chair on which British monarchs sit when they are invested with regalia and crowned at their coronations. It was commissioned in 1296 by King Edward I to contain the coronation stone of Scotland, known as the Stone of Schoon or the Stone of Destiny, which had been captured from the Scots who kept it at Schoon Abbey. The chair was named after Edward Con the Confessor and was previously kept in the shrine at Westminster Abbey. In 1296, Edward seized a block of sandstone from Schoon Abbey in Perthshire called the Stone of Schoon or the Stone of Destiny. This stone had been used by Scottish kings for centuries to sit upon when they were crowned. And here we're seeing the coronation of Scottish King Alexander the Third in 1249 and he sat on the stone of Schoon at Schoon Abbey and they would drape the stone in precious cloths and things in those days so this is one in its original context and where it actually belongs and the legend told that the stone was actually a biblical relic called Jacob's Pillow. Edward brought the stone to England and commissioned the coronation chair to hold it. The high back Gothic style armchair was carved from oak at some point between the summer of 1297 and the year 1300 by a carpenter Walter of Durham. At first the king ordered that the chair be made from bronze, but changed his mind and decided that it should be made from timber instead. It was originally covered in gilding and covered in glass and semi-precious stones, much of which has been lost over the years. The chair is the oldest dated piece of English furniture made by a known artist, although it <clears throat> wasn't originally intended to be a coronation chair, it began to be associated with coronations of English monarchs at some point in the 14th century and the first coronation that it can definitely be proved to have been used for was King Henry IV who we're seeing here. Monarchs used to sit on the stone of Schoon itself until a wooden platform was added later on in the 17th century. <clears throat> when William III and Mary II became joint monarchs in 1689, they required two coronation chairs for the ceremony. William used the original 13th century chair, while a second chair was made for Mary, which still resides in the Abbey's collection today. And this is what you're seeing is Queen Mary's coronation chair, and it's, it's a really good replica. It's made to replicate that one very well. Gilded lions added in the 16th century formed the legs of the chair. They were all replaced in 1727. One of the four lions was given a new head for the coronation of George IV in 1821. The chair itself was originally gilded, painted and inlaid with glass mosaics, semi-precious stones, um, traces of which gilding are still visible upon inspection of the chair, especially on the back where the outlines of foliage, birds and animals survive. A lost image of a king, maybe Edward the Confessor or Edward I, with his feet resting on the lion, was also painted on the back. Today its appearance is of aged, brittle wood. And this gets us onto our fav my favourite bit, because I absolutely love this. In the 18th century, tourists could sit on the chair for a small payment to one of the vergers. The chair has been heavily graffitied over the years. Most of the graffiti 
on the back part of the chair is the result of the Westminster schoolboys and visitors carving their names in the 18th and 19th centuries. One particularly bold Westminster schoolboy though, carved P. Abbott, slept in this chair 5th to the 6th of July 1800 on the sea itself, as one does. You can only wonder really if he was caught and found out, and if so, how many lashes of the cane did he get? And the corner posts of the chair have been badly damaged by souvenir hunters nipping little pieces off over the years. Nails have often been driven into the wood to attach fabric for coronations and in preparation for Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee the chair was covered with a coat in a thick brown paint which had to be removed. Sir Gilbert Scott <coughs> beg your pardon, the Gothic revival architect and antiquary described the chair as a magnificent piece of decoration but sadly mutilated. At 5.40pm on the 11th of June 1914 the chair was, an object, was the object of a bomb attack thought to have been organised by the suffragettes. A corner of the chair was broken off in the explosion although it was strong enough to shake the abbey walls and loud enough to be heard from inside the Houses of Parliament. None of the 70 people in the abbey at the time were injured and the coronation chair was faithfully restored. Over eight centuries of its existence, the chair has only been removed from Westminster Abbey twice. The first time was for the ceremony in Westminster Hall when Oliver Cromwell was inducted as protector of the Commonwealth of England. The second time was during World War II when concerned about the risk of it being damaged or destroyed by German air raids it was removed out of London on the 24th of August 1939. The stone of Schoon was moved out of the way and the chair was loaded onto a truck with two detectives accompanying the driver. It was driven to Gloucester Cathedral where the Dean and Cathedral Architects signed for its receipt. The next day, five carpenters arrived to shore up the roof of a vaulted recess in the Cathedral's crypt with timber supports. Once they had finished their work, the chair was moved into the recess, and it also provided um, ideal protection location for the Cathedral's 13th century bog oak effigy of Robert Curtos and he was placed on the chair. Once done, sandbags were then used to seal off the recess. The chair remained there for the duration of the war. Meanwhile, the chair used for the coronation of Mary II was relocated from Westminster Abbey to Winchester Cathedral for safekeeping. On Christmas Day 1950, Scottish nationalists, students, broke into Westminster Abbey and, and stole the Stone of Schoon, damaging both chair and stone. It was recovered in time for Queen Elizabeth II's coronation in 1953, luckily enough. In 1996, the stone was returned to Scotland, where it is kept in Edinburgh Castle on proviso that it be returned to England for use at coronations. And that has been piped out of Scotland the other day, the Stone of Schoon, and is now safely in England and will be used for the coronation of King Charles III. The coronation chair is highly protected and leaves its secure location behind glass on a plinth in St George's Chapel in the nave only when it is carried into the theatre of coronation near the high altar of the abbey. Between 2010 and 2012 the chair was cleaned and restored by a team of experts in full view of the public at the abbey. In early 2023, a further programme of restoration and conservation was undertaken 
in preparation for the coronation of King Charles III and Queen Camilla. And as I say, this is the photo I took of it recently. And we see the restoration process actually in process because the seat that the king will sit on has been taken away for conservation. So it was a nice little touch. I like to see things living, breathing, being restored. Hence the living history name in my page. And the chair's next incumbent will be King Charles III. I hope you've all found this little documentary interesting. Thank you for watching. And you'll next see the chair at the Coronation Theatre on the Cosmarty pavement with the royal posterior of King Charles plonked upon it when he's crowned with St Edward's crown and given the regalia and such like. And that will take us on to our next piece, which covers St Edward's crown. Thanks for watching, and join me for that one.